the 14th chapter of Exodus, and it's verse 10 I'm reading from. I want to read a few verses with you. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, and when the people of God are on the march for God, the enemy will not be far away. You can make sure of that. You never know there's a devil until you're seen. And the devil gets after you after you're seen. And I'll tell you what's more, if the church is doing what it ought to do, the devil will be against that church. I'm glad the devil's against this church. I'm glad the Pope's against this church. Glad the old modernists are against this church. Hallelujah. So old Pharaoh drew nigh. And the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And this is what's wrong with the people of God. They get afraid. They get afraid. My friend Jesus says, be of good cheer. Don't be afraid. I can handle the situation. There's not a situation that God cannot handle. Remember that. I want to tell you, friend, God is on the throne. I believe in a sovereign, all-powerful God. He's on the throne. We have not to be afraid. Of course, humanly speaking, there's many things to make us afraid. My, when you can hear the marching armies of the Egyptians. My, you can hear the armies of Popery today Modernism and apostasy, the great armies of the enemy. But we're not to be afraid, because the Lord is with us. My, when you have the presence of the Lord, you have not to be afraid. They were afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. My, that's great. When God's people start crying to the Lord, when they're not looking to their ministry, when they're not looking to the general assembly, when they're not looking, of course you would be a fool if you look to that bunch, and uh, when they're not looking to man, looking to the law. Amen. You know, that's the way God saved you when you cried out to the law. Dear woman, last night, we had holy water last night, not the stuff the Pope makes. We have the tears of repentance. That dear publican's wife, the tears were rushing down her cheeks and on to the very floor. And she said to me, she said, you know, I'm addicted to this thing. It's got a grip of me. She said, it's binding me. She said, tonight as you preach, something touched my heart. She said, how can I get rid of the team? I said, just cry out unto the Lord. That's the way you're seeing. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be seen. And she called. And praise God, God saved her. The book's true, you know. Bible's truth will stand the death. Cried out unto the Lord. But then they were some of them, you know, and they got at old Moses. Always get at the leader when you're in trouble. Yes. The poor old pastor, let him have it when there's trouble in the church. Blame it all on him. So they said to Moses, they said, you're responsible, Moses. You're the man got us into this situation. Let me tell you, nobody gets you into the situations, friend, but the overruling of eternal providence. God's got his hand in your life, friend. God has ordered all things after the counsel of his own will. He orders them all. You know, every night, every day when we started off, I prayed, I said, Lord, turn us up a place to stay tonight, a good Protestant place. I didn't want to be poisoned on my holiday. And every house I stayed in, there were all Paisleyites. I'm telling you, in Aberdeen, when my wife went into the tourist information center, and she gave her name, the lady said, is the reverend with you? She says, yes, he is. My, that's great. She says, I'll put you in a good place where they're all for him. And so they did my week. I got really fat. I put on weight. Yes. Praise the Lord. The Lord looks after you, doesn't he? Take it to the Lord in prayer. You say, Mr. Pizzi, do you believe that the Lord wants us to take the little things? Certainly he does. Mother, when that child of yours needs your help as a babe, isn't it the little things that matter? Isn't it the little things that bring the comfort to the child? Thank God God wants to help us with the little things. 
There's not a detail. I'll tell you something. He's even counted the hairs of your head. That's more than your wife ever tried to do. Yes, yeah, and she's professed to love you for years, but you never tried to do that. Of course, some wives wouldn't have a very hard job. They could do it in a few minutes. Yeah. Are you laughing, Bob? <laughs> God has ordered all things after the counsel of his own will. So they said to Moses, they said, you're responsible, Moses. Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. How base and despicable God's people can become. Did you ever notice that? How base and despicable the people of God can become when they're conquered with the sin of unbelief. My unbelief that took the locks from Samson put out his eyes and chained them in the prison. Unbelief does that with the people of God. And you know, as we stand before God this morning, we've had to say, Oh Lord, we have been like these people. We have blamed everybody instead of trusting absolutely in the Lord. Never get beyond the little hymn, Take it to the Lord in prayer. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. That's a good word, isn't it? Don't you be afraid. But Moses, look at those Egyptians. It's all right, says Moses. Don't you be afraid. Fear ye not. Stand still. Deliverance will not come by the arm of the flag. If I'm trusting in my own power, if I'm trusting in my own ability to be delivered, I'm going to fail. Stand still. Look at it. And see the salvation of the law. You know all we have to do? We have just to behold the deliverance. That's all we have to do. Have a look at it. God's great deliverance. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, he shall see them again no more forever. They're living. They're aggressive. They're armed. They're thirsting for your blood. The next time you see them, they'll be washed up on the shore. Yes, sir. Listen to this. Isn't this good? The Lord shall fight for you. Now, that's good, isn't it? Praise God, I've got the Lord in the battle. Yeah. The Lord shall fight for you. Now, what's the devil compared to my wonderful Lord? What's the circumstances of life compared to my wonderful Lord? What's all the opposition and all the enmity of popery and apostasy and corrupted politicians compared to my wonderful Lord? I'm going to win. I'm going to win. The Lord's going to fight for it. Hasn't he been doing that for us all our days since we were saved? The Lord fought for us. He's been fighting for us as a church. I want to tell you something. We were to be put out of the Ulster Hall all during the month of August. And that would have been a terrible thing. Because we're coming now to our last day. Because they were going to paint this hall. And they were going to put us out to paint the Ulster Hall. And it was all arranged. And God graciously overruled it all. To his glory. Of course, I'm glad my wife's a city councilor. I'm glad of that. But the Lord overruled it to his glory. And we're getting into this hall until the last Sunday of September, so we have no problem. And I was trying to get a bit of ground and get a big tent to put it up. And I wondered, I said, what's going to happen to us? But the Lord shall fight for you. I got down on my knees. I said, Lord, if you want us out of the Ulster Hall, there's a purpose in it. And we're not going to let that stop us. Old Dr. Bob Jones Senior used to say, character is what it takes to stop you. That's how you know a man's character. If something will stop him, you'll know just how tough he is. Praise God, nothing can stop the people of God. You could have soon stopped the Niagara torrent with a lollipop stick. 
has taught the people of God. You couldn't do it. And ye shall hold your peace. You'll just keep quiet and see what the Lord's going to do with you. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. You know what the Lord said? The Lord said, Moses, I told you to keep marching and you stopped. You shouldn't have stopped, Moses. You should have kept marching. You know, friend, if the Lord has us marching and we come to a wall, that wall will be there until your nose touches it. And then the wall will be taken away. God's not going to pull down the mountains of next week until I come to them. God's not going to solve the problems of next year until I come to them. God will solve the problems and remove the barriers when I come to them. This is the verse. Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. That's the marching orders for the church. Go forward. When I read that verse last Sunday, I said, Lord, give me a message in that verse. I just want to know, Lord, what that really means to me today. Go forward. And this is the word God gave me. He said, if you're going to go forward, you'll keep your feet in the way of God. That's the first thing. You'll keep your feet in the way of God. You know what the way of God was for the children of Israel? It was freedom from bondage. It was out of Egypt. And it was journeying on to the land flowing with milk and honey. And the Lord said, go forward, keep your feet in the way of God. Keep going in God's way. Don't turn aside to the right hand or to the left hand. Just keep going in the way of God. What is the way of God for the people of God? This is the way of God. Separation from Egypt. That's first of all. Now, of course, there's Egypt socially. And we're living in a sin accursed age, you know. And I'm ashamed of some Christians who want to be conformed to this world. And let me say a word to the young woman folk that are before me. Dear sister in Christ, never try to be like the world. The world's dress today is largely immoral. The world's outlook today is largely sinful. And oh, what a blessing it is to come to God's house and see the young people, the young women of the congregation, dressed in modesty as becomes the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I need to say that, friend, because there would be a terrible danger that the preacher would close his eye. Well, I'm just going to open my eye and I'm going to preach what God's laid in my heart, friend. And we as a church, we have standards to keep. And by the grace of God, we're going to keep those standards. Yes, sir. You say, preacher, you get on like that, you'll lose people. Hallelujah, we'll get others. They'll not be worrying. We have had spring cleans before. Separation. I'm not only talking to the young woman folk. I'm talking to the young men. I'm talking to the fathers and the mothers. Let's be clean in our homes for God. Let's be clean. Now, I'm a, I'm a father. I have five children. I know what children want, friend. But I've got to say in my home, by the grace of God, you can't do that. You can't do it. And I believe that what we need in our homes is a family altar, friend. I'm a believer in the family altar. And every day, what a peaceful thing it is to gather your children around us, even when we have been away. What a happy time we've had to bring the children around us before we set off in the morning. And to read the Word of God. And then to pray. And pray individually for your family. And pray for them. Now that's the duty of every parent. And we should have a family altar in our home. Separation. Of course, this separation reaches into business. It reaches into religion. I'm not to stay in a church that's riddled with apostasy. It's in the World Council of Churches. I have to keep my feet in the way of God. I have to walk the path of separation. But that's not at all. I have to walk the path of consecration. Yes. You know, the separatist churches have failed 
in many cases because they've come out of Egypt and they've stopped. But praise God, God's bringing us into the land of Canaan. He's bringing us into the land flowing with milk and with honey. Hallelujah. And we have to go on in this way. You know what God wants to give us in this church? He wants to give us revival. And every day I'm praying that this great revival will come, and it's going to come. To yeah. You say, well, there's not many signs of it. But bless the name of the Lord, it's going to come. God's going to send us revival. Praise God, he's going to visit us. There's sound, yes, of abundance of rain. I can hear the goings of God in the mulberry trees, and I know the move is on. My, may God send the showers upon us this morning and revive. You know how you get revival? You go far. Go far. Well, keep your feet in the way of God. You not only keep your feet in the way of God, but you keep your faith in the Word of God. It's very important. That's what going forward is. Keeping your faith in the Word of God. You see, the Lord promised He would bring those people into the good land. You know, the Lord gave a promise. Thank God the Lord has promised that he's going to do great things for us. And the Lord gave me a little verse. And he said to me, he said, I'll not leave you until I do unto you as I have shown I will. It's the promise of Jacob. And you know, the Lord showed me many years ago he was going to give us revival in this city. And friend, it's going to come. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. He's going to show us great things, every one of us. My, I'm glad I'm saved, aren't you? I'm glad I'm in this church today. I'm glad we're in the battle. Keep your faith in the Word of God. What about all the money you still need? Praise God. The promises are just as good now as they were yesterday. He's going to supply our need, isn't he? Keep your faith in the Word of God. And all around my soul gives way. His Word is then my hope and stay. It will never fail you, the Word of God. Take the promises of God with you, friend. They'll never fail. Say unto the children of Israel that they go far away. You know, friend, apostasy is a terrible thing. I went and visited when I was in Scotland the great church of Robert Murray McShee. Redeemed when he was just a little over 20 years of age. Died when he was 29. Did more for God than a score of men who lived for 50, 60, 70 years in the ministry. Just a brief span, but he had revival practically all the time in that great church in Peter's of Dundee. And I went in there. The officer in charge, the lady, she said to me, the church officer, she says, wife, she says, you're Mr. Paisley. I said, I'm the only one. She says, well, she says, uh, my children would love to shake your hand. So she brought down her family, and they all shook hands with her. And then her husband showed us through the church. I sat in the pulpit where make she a minister. I said to her, what's your attendance like? That church would hold 12, 1,400 people. She said, well, our best attendance on a Sunday morning would be 300. And she says, at night we never get more than 16. And she says, what's more, there's no Sunday evening service. From the beginning of April to the beginning of October, we close it down altogether. When McShane preached there, the children sat on the stairs. And the people packed the place from floor to ceiling. And scores of people were saved Sabbath by Sabbath. Ichabod has come, the glory has departed. I was staying in Fountain Hall Road with Brother Doom. He says, Brother, there's a church round the corner. Come and see him. And I went round the corner to this church. I said, whose is this church? He says, this is the church of the famous Dr. Horatius Bonner, the brother of Andrew Bonner, great man of God, beautiful building. I suppose it would hold anything up to a 1,000 or 1,200 people. You know what they're turning it into? A badminton hall. And you know what I saw outside it? They cleaned it out and pulled the pews out and the pulpit out. And I saw the old sulkers burned in a bonfire. In the grounds of that church, the word of God burned to a cinder. And the church that once heard the preaching of the famous Dr. Horatius Bonner been turned into a badminton club hall. This is apostasy. 
Why? Because the Church of Scotland has lost its faith in the Word of God. That's why. May the Lord help us to keep our faith in His Word and to preach the Word of God and not apologize for it. We have no apology to make for His blessed, blessed Word. And then I want you to know the something else, that to go forward is to keep your face in the will of God. You remember the Lord Jesus Christ? He set his face as a flint to go to Jerusalem. But that meant the cross. That meant the betrayal. That meant the darkness and the awful sweat of Gethsemane. That meant the scourging of Gabbatha and the passion of the middle tree. Yes, but he set his face to go to the will of God. And if I'm going to go forward, I have to keep my feet in the way of God. I have to keep my faith in the Word of God. I have to keep my faith in the will of God. I have to set my faith. I have to say, there's the target. There's the goal. There's the objective. There's the winning post. Lord, keep me going. What did Paul say? He said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Have we our eyes towards the will of God today? Have we set our face there? Have we said, this is the way we've got to go? It's a misunderstood way. You'll be misunderstood. I came out of that meeting last night, and I went into a cafe down in Princess Street to have something to eat with Brother Doom and his wife and my wife. The Romanists gathered at the door of that cafe, and they called me all the vile names of the day. My friend, that didn't do me a button of harm. Bob Doom said to me, he says, the devil's given you a rough time now, brother. But you have to keep your face in the will of God. You've got to go on, Frank. Through good report and ill report, through riots, tumults, imprisonments, buffetings, misunderstandings, praise God we're going on. This church is going to go on. Not because there's anything in us, but because the grace of God is going to help us to go on. You see that hill you're traveling? You've been climbing it for many a day. You're nearer to the top than you ever were, brother. Maybe you've been praying for your wife. Maybe you've been praying for your husband. Maybe you've been praying for that wayward boy, that sinning daughter. Praise God, you're nearer to the top this morning than ever you've been before. Keep going on, friend. Say not, the Father hath not heard your prayer. You shall have your desire sometime, somewhere. Keep at it. Let nothing keep you back. You say, preacher, I've been slogging it for many a year. And it's hard going. And I'm carrying a burden. And some days I feel almost defeated. Don't be like that, friend. God says, go forward. Keep your face in the will of God. God will help you, friend. He'll see you right. And then something else. Keep your fear in the wisdom of God. That's the last thing, friend. God knows all about it. He's the understanding one. He's all wise. He knew all about the sea. He made the sea. Here's the children of Israel. They walk down, and as they walk down, the great sea divides. When Israel out of bondage came, a sea before them lay. The Lord laid down his mighty hand and rolled that sea away. Yeah. The sea divided. I'd love to have been there, wouldn't you? Amen. The sea divided. And they marched through the sea. They put their foot where no other human ever had put their foot. That's what God's doing with the people of God every day. You're treading roads that no one else ever traveled. Roads of comfort. Roads of blessing. Roads of grace. Hallelujah. Part of the sea. And they all got through. My, they weren't saying anything about Moses and I. They weren't saying you should have buried us in Egypt. My, they said this is great. Big wall here, the big wall, water here, they were marching. And then the Egyptians said, we can do that too. So they cracked their whips, and they drove in their chariots. 
And something went wrong with the hubcaps. And all the nuts loosened. And all the wheels came off. Man, they were in trouble then. It's a great thing when the Lord takes the wheels off the devil's chariots, isn't it? And then those great walls, they suddenly crashed down upon them. And the Egyptians tried to flee from the fury of the God of Israel, but there was no release from them. And friend, Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord. And that's not the end of it. It's the last verse of the chapter. The believed his servant Moses. God vindicated his servant. That believed in Moses then. And you know what they did? They began to sing. And that's what happens when God blesses you. You know, you begin to sing. That dear woman that was saved, I was telling you about her last night. After the meeting, one of her companions came up. She said, did you enjoy the meeting? She says, better than that, I got saved. I said, you're testifying already to what God has done for your soul. You know what happened to that woman? She had got the song. He took me from a fearful pit and from the miry clay and on a rock he set my feet establishing my way. He put a new song in my mouth to magnify the party. No, sir. To praise the denomination. No, sir. To eulogize the preacher, no, sir. He put a new song in my mouth. My God to magnify. Many shall see it. Many shall see it and shall hear. And they too shall trust in the Lord. You know, when you're saved, it's contagious. You know that. You're really saved. You touch someone else. And they touch someone else. And so the work of God goes on. Say unto the people of Israel, and they go forward, Brother, keep your feet in the way of God. Keep your faith in the Word of God. Keep your faith in the will of God. Keep your fear in the wisdom of God. And it will be well with you today. And it will be well with you tomorrow. And praise God, it will be well with you for all eternity.